Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Garage. Uh, I'd like to show you what I'm working on today. I've installed a vintage air uh, condenser. You can see it fits in there pretty nice. It's significantly larger than the old one and it is a parallel flow so it ought to work nice. Uh, had to put in the switch. This is the latest model vintage air with the one piece bracket on the bottom. I like that a lot better. It helps uh, close off the uh, the gap in the radiated core support so that the factory fan and shroud will help draw air through that at a uh, at a stoplight, right? So uh, I've already changed out. I had a leaky valve core. Uh, changed it out too. And I've got my uh, my red on the high and my blue on the low. And I'm fixing to pull the vacuum. Um, so I got the yellow hooked into my JB Industries vacuum pump, right? This old school guy, I've had it for a long time. The way this works is uh, you'll want to uh, start it up right here, and then you'll turn this so that's in line, and that'll put on the vacuum. You always want to turn that off first before turning off your pump, although this does have a check valve. If it didn't have a check valve, it'd suck the oil out of here right back into your system, and that would make for a bad day. So it's just good practice to always turn this off before you shut off the pump. And then we have what we call a gas ballast. And the way this works is uh, when you first fire this thing up, you'll want to have this open. Obviously, you can see I got it open a little bit. And that adds a little bit of air, clean, dry air, into the second stage and helps prevent fouling out the uh, oil inside your, uh, your vacuum pump, right? So, and then for the very last bit of vacuum, we're going to tighten that back down. And that'll get us down to 29 or, or so. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to turn this on. And let's go see what happens up here. Now we're going to suck from both the high and the low to get a maximum, uh, crank this on. And that connects, that basically this goes into right here and stops this. So I just backed it off. So now there's a open to the high side. Now I'm going to crank on the low side too. See how that draws from both sides and that'll give us the best vacuum and uh, if you can't get it way down here to about 28 then you got a leak somewhere looks like she's going down anyway I'm gonna let that run for a little bit and then I'm gonna close off the gas ballast and get the very last amount of uh, stuff and I'll probably let this run for about 30 minutes after I close off the gas ballast and then we'll be back all right the uh, vacuum pumps been running for about 30 minutes and you can see we're down to 29 that's about as good as you'll ever get I don't think you, I don't think you can get 30 but that's pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the uh, gauges and I just turned this in that isolates the yellow from the blue I'm gonna turn this one in that isolates the yellow from the red. Now we're going to close the valve on the pump. And shut it off. Alright, so the next thing is we're going to, we're going to drop a, a can of fruit, uh, R134 refrigerant in there. Let me go get that ready. Okay, so I've got the can all set up here. I'm going to charge this first can into the, the liquid line. This one down here on the muffler. Uh, this goes to the condenser and turns into liquid there. Comes out of your receiver dryer, then goes back up to your expansion valve and then through the uh, evaporator. This is your pressure relief valve, your POA. And what it does is it maintains uh, constant pressure through the evaporator. In this case, I've got it set to about 30 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is, I've changed it from 28 down to 26. Hopefully it doesn't freeze up. We'll see how that goes. But uh, what I want to show you is after you get all this hooked up, these are still closed. We're gonna vent out everything that's in this line because this line's got some air in it. So we're gonna, gonna vent it out a little bit right here. All right, that's enough. Well, maybe. All right, so we're just venting a little bit just to blow out that line, make sure there's no air in it, right? That's important that you guys do that. And then we're going to open this side. And like I said, I'm gonna turn this can upside down 
and go into the, the high pressure side. Now the engine's not running. You would never do this with the engine running because the compressor would put the pressure at a higher PSI than the can, so it would try to fill up the can rather than the can trying to fill the system. But we're doing this with the engine off, so I'm gonna put this first can in. I'm gonna turn it upside down and put it into the liquid line. All the rest of the cans, we're gonna shut this guy off because we don't want any of this. <laughs> If we don't want a can blowing up, we're gonna be charging the rest into the low side. But this first can, we're gonna put it in with the engine off on the high side. So uh, we've already vented it. At this point, all I need to do is open this up. And uh, we will turn this upside down. And we're just gonna hold it there until she quits going in. So I'm gonna finish that up and then we'll be back. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, I got most of the can in uh, with it upside down. Um, then I just laid it here like that and walked away for about 10 minutes. And uh, looks like we're up to about 85 PSI. Did it open both sides? Huh. But anyways, at this point, we're gonna close this one off. I'm gonna make sure this guy's shut off because this can I think is empty yeah, pretty empty got a little bit in there uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that can out and then uh, we'll charge into the low side this guy over here this side's gonna be shut off we got both of them shut off right now we're gonna purge out the can when we hook it up and uh, then we'll start the engine and put that can in all right, I've got my can hooked up. These are the new uh, 134 cans. They actually have a uh, self-sealing center in them, so you just gotta depress the center a little bit. And then, uh, you know, if you don't use all the can, it, you just back that T-handle back off and it's got a spring seal that comes up and shuts the whole can off. Pretty cool. Uh, that way you don't waste uh, refrigerant. Anyways, um, I've already perched it right here. So the air's all out of the yellow line, back to the can. And uh, I'm gonna open up the uh, blue. And uh, I'm just gonna let it sit there. We'll see how if it goes up some. It, yeah, it's going up, because it was 85. I'm gonna let it sit there for just a minute and uh, get as much of it as possible in it before I uh, start the engine. I let it just sit for about 10 minutes without the engine on and we're up to a static pressure of 90 PSI, I've got this thing shut off. You don't want this one running, right? We're just gonna watch the gauge. We're shut off relative to the uh, the yellow hose there, but we'll be able to read the pressures on the high side. Now on the low side, when we start this, we're gonna charge until we get to our POA pressure. And I told you already that I set that to 26, which is actually below freezing, but we're gonna see how that works out. And uh, then we'll go put in a little extra on top of that once we reach the 26 PSI. And hopefully our head pressures won't be too high over here and everything will be cooling nicely we'll see um, anyway so we're gonna go start the truck now you also want to make sure that your compressor is uh, not making noise uh, if it is shut your truck off and then start it back up after it sits for a while you know what pressure I'm gonna be taking temperatures on my on my compressor make sure they don't go over like uh, 200 degrees because uh, if it goes over 200 degrees you're gonna have problems now you make sure all your Things are pulled over to the side here. I've got a gauge in the vent. See, it's pretty warm in here right now. What, 90 degrees or so? So let's go ahead and get her started. I think I got everything out of the fan out there. Hopefully there's no hoses dangling down in there. That wouldn't be good. I haven't started this thing in a while. Got her on uh, max. Let's go listen to the compressor, make sure it's not making any noise. You know, all that oil usually winds up in your evaporator, and uh, it's not in your compressor when you first start up until the gas has gone through the evaporator, and picked up the oil, and takes it back to the compressor. So, doesn't sound like it's making any noise. That's good. I want to check the temperature. said earlier that's the ambient temperature right now about 95 96 remember 
we got this one blocked up. You don't want to open that up, but we can read the pressures on the high. And we're at like 120 or so, and we got 30 on the low. This is a little bit above. Our POA pressure. Ooh, this thing's sucking down nice. It's nice and cold. Anyway, we're going to let that run a little bit, and I'll report. Okay, you can see we're sucking down to 26 PSI now. That's what the evaporator pressure relief is. And uh, I've got almost two cans in it. Now, it's going to take less than what we would normally put in this because the, uh, the evaporator is physically smaller uh, as far as its volume, and so is the receiver dryer. So I doubt we'll get a, a full three cans in, but we'll see how it goes. Starting to get a little frost on a POA valve. You'll go through a little frosty state. See on the frost? Before you get to your actual uh, final pressure, it's going to frost up on you. Alright? And right now we're at uh, 26. You know, that's our evaporator pressure. And we're under 150. Now we're going to probably be up, I don't know, a little bit higher. Maybe 175, 200. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Well, the uh, compressor got up to about 200 degrees, so I shut her down. Uh, before I shut it down, I closed the blue uh, valve, uh, close off the can from the system because I didn't want the system blowing back into the can because that'll that'll move oil into the can and out of the system. You don't want that. So before you shut off the engine, be sure you close that valve. Uh, anyway, I shut it off, let it sit for a while, and uh, the reason the reason why it's getting hot is because. The system, the flow of the cool refrigerant goes into the compressor and cools it, but until this refrigerant actually hits a temperature that's cool enough to, uh, to cool the compressor, it just starts getting hotter and hotter. So we shut her down. Let's see what our static pressure is now. We're up to, what, 94? Anyway, I'm going to start it up and run it some more. It's pretty boring at this point. We're just trying to get the last the can out and then we'll put another one on i want to show you something real quick in the uh, factory service manual for the 71 c20 pickup you can see if it's 90 degrees your head pressure should be about 200 to 210 with r12 we got 134 so we're probably going to be 10 or 15 percent higher than that so let's assume it's a uh, 200 to well, 10 percent of 200 is 20 right so we should be around 225 ish when this thing's all charged up and you can see down here it says evaporator pressure it says whatever your poa is right and i've got it set as 26. you can see it's uh, about 94 degrees out here so we're going to be a little bit between yeah, we might be up i don't know we might be up around 230 240 who knows we'll continue charging and see how it goes all right the uh Put another can on it and just opened it up and my pressure's jumped up to 35-ish and uh, about 250 on the high. Now mind you, we're sitting here idling. We don't have the RPMs going very fast and uh, there's very little airflow. I do have a fan on it, but not a big fan. And uh, very little of this can's in there. So about two and a quarter cans is about all I'm putting in there. So I think I'm gonna call it right here. This thing's nice and cold, and now it's going back to the compressor and keeping it cool. So let's check the compressor out and see what it's at. And, uh, well, looks like we're at 173 degrees, so that's pretty fair. That's looking pretty good. That'll drop some, like, if I, if 
uh, we wrap up, uh, we increase the RPMs, it's come down, down closer to where it's supposed to be. I believe this will drop too, but uh, I think we're where, where we need to be, guys, and uh, only like two and a quarter cans. Let's go check out the uh, temperature. All right, I just got back from a little drive, and it looks like the best I could get on the uh, gauge over here, the little uh, temperature gauge, is uh, about 58 degrees, which is going to be about a, what, a 37 degree drop relative to ambient temperatures, so I guess I'll take that. You know, I wish it was a little cooler, but is what it is, and it also seems like... Uh, with that new condenser, it's it's able to sit there and idle without the uh, high pressure going way out of you know out of sight, sky high, and blowing everything up. So that's good. I mean, I let it idle for a long time and didn't have any problems. Uh, it didn't take very much freon at all with this new uh, vintage air condenser and receiver dryer. Both of those are you know hold less gas than the old setup and. Uh, be honest, I only put in two cans. Now, now I did crack open a third one, but I just, I just barely cracked it open, and uh, the pressures, you know, went up, and uh, I was 250 on the high, and uh, after it all uh, it came to an equilibrium, uh, a, a steady state with the engine running, I got, I was back down to about 28 psi on the low. So uh, everything seems like it's working okay. I'm going to call that success. That's it from Brian's Garage. We will talk to you later.